Greetings, Azzy here, and you're listening to the August 2023 edition of All Goth Considered with Obscure Undead. This month, we'll be hearing from a French cold wave duo you don't want to miss on their upcoming US tour in August, a mysterious post-punk new wave act from Portland, and a goth fueled five-piece keeping the southern states spooky. So refill your beverage of choice in your vessel of preference, and let's dive into these dark waters together. First up, we head to France, a country well known for its major contributions to the early development of Cold Wave. Based in Grenoble, Love Adirax, the duo of Helene and Julien, are adding to the modern canon of music with their electric 2020 debut album, Have a Frenier. Their lyrics are heavily inspired by a deep love and appreciation for classic literature, and their sound is a compelling and eclectic mix of minimalist and experimental Cold Wave and Dark Wave. But Azzy, I hear you saying their last release was in 2020, to which I say, yes. But if you live in the US, did you know they're doing an East Coast and Midwest tour in August? You should, and you should also go see them live and recommend to them some of your favorite bands. So back to the feature and enough of me rambling, we're going to hear from Alain and Julien about a song with a lot of meaning for them and an emotional favorite of mine, Anna Venus. Yo, love what tracks for Obscurounded, and we'll speak about our track, Anna Venus, that has been published on both Keros and Eberfreni albums. Anna Venus is quite a, an old track. We are playing it live for a long time, and there were different versions of it. The live version is longer now than it used to be, and the structure is less minimal. So, when we decided to shoot one video for one of our songs, our choice came naturally on Anna Venus. We made it by night in an old chapel in the countryside where I grew up. This track is based on a poem by the French author Arthur Rimbaud called Venus Anadiomen, which means in Greek, Venus out of the sea, considering the mythological birth of the goddess Venus. I decided to shorten the name into Anna as it means anorexia. Um, I have been moved by the fact that some people are ready to employ really extreme methods to look beautiful. I always have in mind, for instance, the Tanorexia self-portrait made by Cindy Sherman. Some people play with their health to match with a certain ideal of beauty. This is a kind of contradiction, as beauty is supposed to be linked with health, and the extreme body thinness is generally associated with disease and eventually old age. For instance, the parents are always reassured by a plump baby eating well. That means that he is in a good health. Youth is supposed to be plump. My mother was a nurse and she treated young people suffering from anorexia. She told me once about her experience with some patients. So, this song deals with that we consider as ugly, but can also be seen as beautiful through the eyes of someone else. (laughs) This is why I'm singing horribly beautiful in the song. I pronounce it 20 times, as 20 is supposed to be an age of youth and carelessness. But we can also look very old when we are 20 years old. The French novelist Paul Nizan wrote once, for instance, I was 20, I won't let anyone say, those are the best years of your life. The first image of this song is about a woman going out of the bathtub and looking like a skeleton out of a coffin. It it is a very dark romantic image, kind of vanity in words. But this woman is described in a clinical way in the poem of Arthur Rimbaud, as if she were on a dissection table. I guess that you can't dissect totally something beautiful without turning it into something ugly. This is like analyzing every second of a movie that, that's pure flesh. Uh, this is not living anymore. A couple of other Ebefroni songs are based on Arthur Rimbaud's poetry, Ellen offered me a long time ago Rimbaud's complete work in English as I was studying Jim Morrison poetry at the university. 
and some French verses seem to get a different meaning translated in English. Uh, this book helped me to build a bridge between those two languages that I love. So we return to the U.S., to Portland, Oregon, home to a DIY new wave post-punk band that I honestly can't tell you much about. They're an enigma, they're a mystery, they're pleasure victim. Their discography is filled with really interesting modern and deconstructed takes on new wave that in places borders on minimalist EVM with the heavy use of bassy electronic beats and synth stings. But their latest single, Crossmaker, completely shakes expectations and shows their versatility. The melody begins almost exclusively bass-driven up until the build-up about midway through the track where Pleasure Victim drops some surprise sax on us and begins subtly complexifying the instrumentation. Again, I use the word deconstructed, but it's what fits best. Let's hear from Pleasure Victim about Crossmaker. It's hard to explain the hidden realms that we all go to. Take that back into the real world and put it into words. But I can try. I was inspired by a lot of classic bands like T-Rex and Specimen. We use a classic electro-harmonics polychorus pedal. And I wanted the whole effect to sort of have a refracted image like something being torn apart or two images being split apart and the cover artwork reflects that as well it's 
two images laid on top of each other. I think we were feeling a lot of splitting and refracting during that time. And I wanted the music to express that. It was an extraordinary time, both a grand adventure and a fragmentation of our life as humans and also as, as a band. And what's amazing is we found the space and the time so that we could create. My part was very simple, and my vocals are sung from the depths. It can be hard to explain these things sometimes, so I think that's where I want to express it, is in the music. You know, it's all in there.
on today's journeys to Texas, home of five-piece, bombastic, self-described dream goth band, Happy Phantom. Fronted by multi-instrumentalist Jackie Legos, Happy Phantom channels all the best of goth from Bauhaus, The Cure, and Specimen to more modern bands along the lines of, say, Bloody Dead and Sexy and Shrouds. If you've been craving modern goth rock that isn't power slides and 90s rehash, I can't recommend Happy Phantom enough. Their latest single and music video, Dia de los Muertos, is a dark and atmospheric track, sort of reminiscent of 100 Years by The Cure, with a violist weaving between the guitar, synths, and bass, creating a really beautiful miasmic haze. Jackie gives us some insight into his inspiration for Dia de los Muertos. First and foremost, thank you, Azzy, for having me as a guest, and thank you for sharing our new single with your listeners. So the concept for the song Dia de los Muertos, also referred to as the Day of the Dead, came to me from a combination of different elements. Indirectly, I would have to attribute some of the sounds and instrumentation used in this song to musicians like Danny Elfman. In 1992, he wrote the song Face to Face along with the B-side Sea of Light in collaboration with Susie and the Banshees for the Tim Burton film Batman Returns. His use of xylophones and vibraphones always stuck with me, and the squeamish sounds of cat strings, as I call them, in the background, using violins and violas, was one of those details that made those songs so different from everything else that was out there at the time. I guess in the back of my mind I always wanted to do something musically along those lines, thus was born Dia de los Muertos. As I was writing the music for this particular song, several thoughts gathered in my head, I thought about Tim Burton's Corpse Bride and Batman Returns, and as I mentioned, I thought about Danny Elfman and Susie. I thought about the film The Crow City of Angels, but most importantly, I thought about the day or days itself, the celebration of the dead, Dia de los Muertos. I truly hope people enjoy what we've put together for them in this song. Thank you.
Thanks for listening, friend bats. For more, please follow me on most major social media platforms under the handle Obscure Undead and let me know what I should be listening to. And if you like the show and want to support me, check out the Obscure Undead Patreon at patreon.com slash obscureundead or send me a tip on PayPal to obscureundead at gmail.com. And if you're a band, feel free to get in contact with me at obscureundead at gmail.com. All right. Take care of yourselves, my friends. Love you. Bye-bye.